Enter tax havens. Tax havens are usually small countries that don't really have much going for them, so they offer an extremely enticing business environment to attract foreign businesses to work with them and collect fees. There are exceptions, but when you look at the majority of tax havens around the world, this is usually the case. Take Nauru for example. Nauru is the third smallest country in the world at only 8 square miles northeast of Australia. Not really much going for it economically, but in 2001, Nauru was internationally blacklisted because nations were worried it had become a center for money laundering. There are four main qualifiers that make a country a tax haven. Number one, the country has little or no taxes. Number two, they have very convenient financial products and incentives like shell companies for foreigners, but don't allow those very same financial products to be used within the country domestically. Take Malta for example, a tiny island off the coast of Sicily. Local Malta businesses have to pay a whopping 35% tax on all profits. Yet foreign corporations only have to pay as little as 5%. The number three thing that makes a country a tax haven is that the financial activities of the country lack transparency. And lastly and most importantly, the country doesn't cooperate with other countries to give away their clients' identities. Preferably, not revealing client information to authorities is required by law. Along with these four main points, little or no taxes, great financial products for foreigners, little or no transparency, and no cooperation with authorities, you also want to be absolutely sure your tax haven also has these things. The country needs to have a stable economy and political climate. Shifting power can lead to someone taking over that isn't so lenient with foreign businesses and might even seize your assets, like how this happened in Cuba with the mafia. And the economy has to be entrenched and dependent on their financial industry. The more a tax haven depends on this financial sector, the more the economy depends on dirty money, the less likely they'll ever be to change their tax haven reputation and will even actively encourage it. Although this isn't 100% guaranteed that the country will never get stricter as we'll cover later, it does help mitigate your risk. The best tax havens have locals that accept some level of corruption in order to keep the money flowing. Or in other words, tax havens need to have a symbiotic relationship with reluctant foreign taxpayers. The country gets to collect fees, employ their people, and in return, the foreign companies get a haven and protection from the state itself. There needs to be a strong incentive for them not to screw you over. Some of the biggest tax havens right now include the island of Jersey between France and the UK, the island of Bermuda in the Atlantic, the Cayman Islands with the biggest one being the British Virgin Islands, where their economy holds more than 5,000 times the value of what an economy its size should hold. Once you have a tax haven in mind, it's time to start your shell company. Here's how opening up a shell company usually works. First, you're going to choose a company in that tax haven that offers these financial services for sale. Although you can buy shell companies online, if you're a very well-off individual, you're probably going to want to have your lawyer, accountant, or banker be the intermediary that deals with these companies to make sure everything is on the up and up. You can either buy a brand new shell company or they'll have existing ones that have a history of transactions already to make it look more legitimate, which costs extra. Once you purchase a shell company, now you have some decisions to make. Who is going to be the shareholder of the company? Even though your name can't be legally released in many tax havens if you choose yourself as a shareholder, would you want to risk having your name on company papers? For the extra paranoid, some havens like the British Virgin Islands and Panama let companies offer bearer shares. These are nameless stock certificates where whoever physically possesses the pieces of paper owns the company. This means the firm issuing the stocks can't track the owner, and transferring ownership for a company is as simple as handing the pieces of paper to someone else. No paper trail. Once you determine the shareholder of the company, now it's time to choose the directors. Although tax havens don't require the owners of a company to be publicly listed, they do require directors of a company to. Not to worry though because these financial firms offer what's known as nominee directors. Cheap employees of the financial firm that only control your company on paper, while you retain all your power via a secret power of attorney agreement. These pencil pushers sign documents for you, will hold meetings on paper, open up bank accounts for you, etc. And these financial firms will even have these directors pre-sign legal templates that can be used for future clients that come in. Some of these employees are directors on 100 plus shell companies. Once you have directors, now it's time to open up a bank account under your new anonymous shell company. Offshore companies are worthless without a bank account because bank accounts are required to do any significant transaction. So this is a pretty important step. I'd like to open a bank account. Oh, bless you. I'll be right back. And now your new shell company is pretty much good to go. What's great is that since these financial firms are really just registering paperwork with the local government, they're in a very competitive low margin business, which means all your needs are pretty affordable. With some estimates putting in around $1,500 to $4,000 to open up a shell company in the British Virgin Islands. Depending on how special your needs are, expect to pay a little more. 
Now it's time to put your tax haven to work. Remember, our goal is to not pay taxes. 